Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. Today, I want to talk to you guys about Bartlett Lake S, which is easily one of the most interesting things I've heard from the rumor mill when it concerns Intel for quite some time now. Because it is Intel's, um, let's just say, mass market CPU. It is the processor which they are hoping to really um, excite not only the OEM market, who obviously want cheaper entry-level systems, but also gamers as well. Now, this is, of course, uh, the, the, the golden rule with PC gaming, in that most folks will, of course, lust after products like the RTX 1490, the 7950X3D, and other Halo SKUs, and of course, we're going to get a bunch of product releases this year. Zen 5 is looking like it's going to be about Q2 with Q1 next year, being the X3D variant. Intel's Arrow Lake is going to also be pretty similar in terms of performance, most likely. We'll talk more about Arrow Lake in a moment. But it's also on a new platform, and with those platform details that have leaked, it's probably going to be pretty expensive, at least initially with all of the boards, with all of those extra PCIe lanes, etc, etc. So the question is, what does Intel do? Well, Bartlett Lake S is seemingly the solution that Intel have come up with. So what exactly is Bartlett Lake S, I hear you ask? Well, that's a very good question. It is a refresh of Raptor Lake. Well, technically, there's already been a refresh of Raptor Lake. So I guess this is like a refresh of a refresh. And confusingly, it's also going to be on the LGA 1700 platform. So let's just jump into this because there's lots of uh, stuff to talk about. If you've just built a new gaming PC over Christmas and need a software upgrade, or perhaps even some games, or want to build a new rig with all of the hardware coming out in 2024, WhoKeys has you covered this Valentine's Day with amazing discounts on Windows 10 keys, Windows 11, Office packages, Visual Studio, and even, well, games. And to top it off, you can use our code, which is RGT, for an additional 25% off of the already discounted packages. There are huge discounts on various software and operating systems. For example, you can get Windows 10 Pro for just $17, and of course, it can be upgraded to Windows 11, or even Microsoft Office for just $48.85. And if you don't fancy the upgrade steps from Windows 10 to 11, you can pick up a straight copy of Windows 11 directly for just just over 23 US dollars after the additional 25% off code is used, which again is RGT. Personally, I've had very positive experiences buying from their platform using my own personal account. I've also had friends use Hookie's store as well. For example, one of them wanted to pick up Microsoft's Visual Studio as they're a budding developer, and they wanted to save a few bucks, and a number of them have also bought Windows keys. The purchasing process is very straightforward. All you have to do is browse through the products, and see which one you're interested in, hit the buy now option, and of course you'll be directed right to the shopping cart. There you can apply our code, which is again RGT, to enjoy that extra 25% off, the already heavily discounted Valentine's Day price, and then you can just finish your purchase and the code will arrive in less than five minutes. Again, thanks very much to Hookies for sponsoring the channel, and thank you if you're considering one of the purchases and helping to support the channel as well. So before we get into the new information, let's just quickly go over what we know about Arrow Lake, because I think it's going to add a lot of context. Intel's upcoming Arrow Lake processors look pretty impressive indeed. While we've not had extensive third-party benchmarks leak quite yet, the performance gains do seem pretty solid from what I'm hearing. And this is backed up actually with some leaks from Igor's lab, where they posted some internal Arrow Lake projections. And you can see here that it's against Raptor Lake refresh. Or to put it another way, the 14900K against an 8 plus 16 core count Arrow Lake S CPU. Intel's testing set the PL levels to 253, and just to make things really clear here, these are not IPC tests. Clocks can do as they want. This is raw performance. Now, this is important because from what I'm hearing, Arrow Lake is going to run a lower clock frequencies than, let's say, Raptor Lake. Exact speeds are very hard to nail down at this stage. I've heard mid 4 gigahertz for engineering samples, but again, it's so early, I would not take that to the bank and just take it as a point of interest. But as you can see here, the tests are using the industry standard spec tests with integer and floating point, etc. And the performance is up to 21% in some extreme cases and low single digits in other extreme cases. 
Long story short, I think these tests are pretty accurate for what we can expect for Arrow Lake S on the desktop, speaking to multiple sources. Now, of course, the scaling and how well different applications will perform, for example, even games are going to do better uh, with certain game engines and versus another game engine, etc., etc. But still, I think we can get a pretty good idea that these CPUs are going to be very interesting. Now, as I've said before in a few videos, hyper-threading on the P-Core is going bye-bye, so that's obviously a pretty big change architecturally for Intel. There's also no rentable units either. Now, the hyper-threading thing does seem confirmed. There's been some official document leaks, credit to Yuki for these on Twitter. And yeah, again, we've gone over that recently, but I just want to mention it again because this information regarding hyper-threading and the rentable cores has been trending online, so I just thought I'd take another opportunity to mention it real quick. The one good thing about Arrow Lake, though, is it does seem to be very energy efficient. So heat and power draw are going to be much better off than previous generations. Yeah, it is Intel, so like you, I'll kind of wait and see on that one as well. But adding to this, I'm hearing that there's potentially a refresh planned for next year for Arrow Lake. Now, I don't have an exact date when this is going to launch, but basically it's got small upgrades, with the biggest of which being the doubling of the e-cores. So again, 16 for the uh, processors which are launching this year, but it's going to go up to 32. Now, interestingly, early leaks for the Arrow Lake processors stated that 8 16 were the specifications that Intel were aiming for originally. But in the slide I was given, I'm sorry, I cannot share it, it's watermarked at all hell and back. Um, it was basically cut to 16 to make power delivery, uh, distribution, simplicity of design of the platform, etc., etc., easier. Now, remember, Arrow Lake does still utilize the Meteor Lake platform. Now, whether or not Intel will go and release these processors, I honestly don't know. But what we can say at this stage is the following. LGA1851 is, of course, going to be the platform that Arrow Lake uses. And it's going to be pretty expensive, particularly at launch. It seems that fast DDR5 memory is going to be a prerequisite to get the best performance, as you would expect. There's going to be more PCIe lanes, etc., etc. And... If you are the owner of an LGA 1700 board and you want to drop in upgrade, well, you can just go straight to hell because you can't do that. Obviously, the sockets are literally incompatible. So what Intel are doing is taking a leaf or two out of AMD's book, but in typical Intel fashion, they're doing so in a very unique way. Now, I've now been told about Bartlett Lake S, which I presume is named after a lake in Arizona, as Intel tends to have naming schemes which follow this basic premise. Unfortunately, I do not have a full SKU list right now, but I'm reasonably convinced Intel will actually launch these products. Basically speaking, they are budget solutions uh, which are going to be opposite to Arrow Lake. Not just because the CPUs are cheaper, but because it's still going to be on the LGA1700 platform. So if you own one of the older LGA1700's processors, or you are yet to buy into the platform, this could also be beneficial because we could see reduced board costs um, really start to make a difference in the market. And of course, that would allow Intel to sell things quite cheaply. So what actually the hell even is Bartlett Lake S? Well, I'm glad you asked. In a nutshell, it's a Raptor Lake refresh. Well, okay, refresh, refresh. Yeah, you heard me, another refresh of Raptor Lake. I am, however, getting some conflicting information that there could be some small architectural changes. One of the ones that I heard about is a large L3 cache, but I've yet to actually confirm this with multiple sources. Now, obviously, I am talking about LGA here, um, but I've also heard that this is going to be beneficial across the board because there's probably going to be some type of RPL H series refresh as well, which, of course, is going to be beneficial for the mobile side of things, but... 
um, when we're talking about OEMs, yes, of course, the you know cheaper mobile variants for Raptor Lake Refresh, well, another Raptor Lake Refresh, is going to be great. It also allows OEMs who, of course, build volume PC hardware, you know, pre-built, basically. They could put out low-end Raptor Lake-based CPUs and motherboards and kind of just cost-reduce things up the wazoo to get things as cheap as possible. And honestly, if you're running a system in like an office for like emails, Word, that type of thing, then that's absolutely fine. But if you have a reasonable configuration, I mean, let's face it, um, if you're buying something for the, you know, low to mid range for gaming, you don't need a whole amount of CPU performance. Let's just be honest. I mean, obviously there are some games that love CPU cores and all of that, but ultimately if you're pairing it with something, for example, like a 7600 a XT or an RTX 4070 or something like that, you don't need, you know, the CPU performance of, let's say, a 14900K or a 7950X 3D or whatever. Anyway, so this rumor is super fresh at this point. And that's quite interesting because it's going to be very interesting to see where the prices of Bartlett Lake actually ends up and how the performance is segmented between the two sets of processors. Now, this is also interesting because basically speaking, um, with the mobile side of things, we're going to get, or rather just across the entire uh, set of uh, products, we have Arrow Lake and Lunar Lake. Now, Lunar Lake, of course, is going to be more for the uh, mobile market. That's what we're going to be seeing that in. And it's basically the same underlying CPU architecture as Arrow Lake. Arrow Lake, of course, is going to be Arrow Lake S. But we also now have this Raptor Lake refresh again, Bartlett Lake. Now, again, just to reiterate what I've already said, I don't have the SKU list and I do not have core counts at the moment. So it's very probable, and I say probable as in not confirmed, that if you have, let's say, a 13700K, um, it just won't be a meaningful upgrade. Now, I'm also uncertain about the L3 cache, and also, even if it is upgraded, hypothetically, how much of a difference is it going to make? Well, how much of an upgrade even is the cache? All of those are big questions. I also don't think Intel is going to do any significant reworks of the architecture. I mean, frankly, I think the chance of the L3 cache being upgraded is not super high. But again, a source has told me that it possibly is upgraded. Honestly, I'm just going to say I don't know about that. Um, I'll just throw it in here for the sake of why not. But what we do know, of course, is that it's very unlikely that Intel are going to go in, do a bunch of improvements, let's say, on the execution units of the CPU branch prediction, whatever. They're, they're not going to do something like that. What they may do is make some subtle improvements. So, for example, the IMC could just be slightly improved for higher clock frequencies on memory, etc., etc. But I just want to be very abundantly clear. I'm putting... Um, my spin on things. I'm speculating here. I do not know what changes exactly the refresh is going to have. But yeah, the marketing is also going to be very curious. Now, the boards being cheap is going to be the key thing here because um, obviously OEM boards, um, you know, they are especially for like certain brands. <laughs> <laughs> they cost reduced the hell out of those things and it's like oh you've actually put two memory slots so i can have dual channel holy crap you guys are generous i'm actually surprised about that you know those kind of boards they can really you know shave as much as possible off so it's going to be very interesting exactly how that works versus the mainstream where you can build stuff but a big problem that intel has with the lga 1700 it hasn't had the same longevity and install base that AMD are enjoying with AM4. Obviously, AM4 has been around now since, like, I don't know, the dinosaurs essentially ro uh, roamed the earth. Um, and obviously, while there are some exceptions, some, you know, really first-generation AM4 boards, they they can be a little dicey at times, you know, a little iffy in terms of build quality, etc., etc. But as a general statement, there is a lot of forward and backwards compatibility. And of course, AMD have done some really good work. Uh, basically having a CPU for everyone on that price packet for AM4. And of course, another benefit of AM4 as well is that you have a pretty good abundance of DDR4 memory in the supply chain, and yeah, it can really be leveraged to a lot of benefit of uh, AMD. The next couple of years in technology are honestly just going to be absolutely crazy. There's a bunch of different product launches, of course, from all of the three big vendors, and if we take even the PC market 
out and just talk about console stuff alone there's the playstation 5 pro which is expected there is of course new nintendo console which honestly i think this year is going to be the year that nintendo kind of officially avails the switch to or whatever the hell it ends up being called and with all of the new games and pushes to AI, et cetera, et cetera. It's gonna be a crazy couple of years in technology. I'm really excited, to be honest, to see what happens. And while, of course, the Bleeding Edge is really cool, um, ultimately, it's also very important to have products which kind of appeal to the mass market. So I will be absolutely fascinated to see what the marketing is like for Bartlett Lake, and not just in terms of the messaging, but also what SKUs are released, what type of um prices they are aiming for how they are going to be messaging this in terms of with oems etc etc and of course those of us who are enthusiasts and just prefer to build their own hardware with that said guys hopefully you have enjoyed the video this has definitely been a video that i wasn't intended to make i was intended to talk about something completely different today but um yeah i just had to talk about this because i just found it one of the more intriguing leaks actually from intel certainly curious on this one. With that said, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.